So here's a coin story that will really uh, inspire you. So there's two different ways of marketing a coin and I'm doing the complete opposite of what most dealers would do. So you guys seen that California commemorative that I've showed off a lot. It's got toning right above uh, the guy on the obverse, you know, prospecting for gold. And there's a little bit of blue kind of rim toning on the bottom, on the reverse of the coin. And so I love this coin so much. I paid like $1,080 for it. And I tried to sell it for like six months for 1500 bucks. I went to every single person um, that I knew that would pay the strongest. They said, no, it wasn't worth it. Um, the coins are about a $500 coin. And so I was, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep this coin. Um, now I have a commemorative uh, Cali that's in a Rattler 65 CAC. It's going to be a great pair. And so I was at the TNA show about a month ago and Lance Hips, which I'm going to include a photo of him right now. He's the guy that actually bought the coin at the Grapevine show this weekend. But he, he offered me two grand for it. So I was like, Man, I already talked myself into keeping this coin. I offered it for $1,500 for six months and nobody really wanted it. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it, man. I mean, I don't think two grand's worth it for me. I'm, I'm in love with it too much. He circled back to my table. He's like, 2250. I'm like, no, came back again, uh, 2500. I'm like, bro, if it comes up, I'll message you, I'll talk to you. And then, you know, a month went, went along. We went to the Grapevine show this weekend. He comes up to me, three grand, and I'm like, Okay, you're scaring me. No, I don't want, no, no, go away. And then uh, I came around, back around to his table a little bit, and uh, he, he pulls out his checkbook, and he says, I'm, I'm writing you a check for 3500 And I'm like, make it four grand, make it four grand. That's, and literally, someone says, wow, you're taking advantage of this dealer or that dealer. Uh, Lance is pretty good about figuring out what coins are accurately graded. Also, he has a different kind of client base. But also, I mean, if I was offered 3500 for that coin, I would still keep it. I think it's that nice of a coin. I love it. I don't think I'll ever find another California tone that way, that nicely. Their character on the coin is crazy. It's nice. So we, I sold it to him for four grand. It hurt me to even walk away. Like I took the check and it hurt me. And, uh, but the alt, there's a few lessons to be learned here. So like I said, there's two different ways of marketing a coin. There's the fresh inventory um, type of approach, which basically means you share it with nobody. Um, you don't display it on social media. And then one day you're going to put it in front of a, a dealer or a collector and they're going to go, oh my gosh, who else knows about this coin? This thing's amazing. I want to buy it. And there's the other approach, which I did. I shared it with a bunch of people. I walked around the show at TNA and I said, here's my collection. Uh, what do you think's cool? And then Lance thought that was cool, right? I also shared it on this channel. I also shared it on Instagram and people really loved it. There's like, it was almost like a growing attraction. And the, the reason why I did that is because with marketing, sometimes it's, it's best to say, here's this nice coin and it's not for sale. And so what had happened was I did that so many times and people really started to, it's almost like a household name. That Cali is almost like a household name to a lot of people now. And so, Finally, when it came to, around to it, I got the price that I really wanted while displaying it and showing everybody and really enjoying it myself and making content out of it. And so uh, sometimes there's, a, there's the approach of holding it back. Sometimes there, there's the approach of sharing with, with others. And another kind of lesson that I would talk to you guys about is why sell a coin if you're not going to be content with the price you sell it for. If you love it that much, you know, I think you should, you should wait it out. And so we waited out on this one. I think, you know, it's, it's sold for a good price. Very happy with the, what would happen with it. Um, wish Lance well. Here's a photo of Lance with the coin. I wanted to take a photo with him because it's just, you know, it's just a moment in time. It's just a piece of history for me that it's like what I'm doing is working. What we're doing is working. Um, it, it pays off. And so making $3,000 on the coin is a huge success and it's something that we want to duplicate and replicate and that's why we're keeping coins another thing that we talk about is why sell everything that you get off the bat for 10 percent i could have got that coin for 1100 bucks and i could have sold it for 1300 okay 200 bucks i could have made a quick 200 dollars, or i could have said hey let me hold it for six months eight months and then sell it for three thousand dollars in profit to the right person that wanted it that would pay the extra money 
So selling stuff off the bat is something that I would stray away from sometimes on the right coins. And that's why we collect and keep a lot of coins because one day they'll be, they'll, instead of getting us 10%, they'll get us 100% or 500% or 1000%. And so that's something for you to consider as well. Don't take the quick bucks sometimes over making the big amount of money in the long term. But let's cut to the other story, which is kind of a depressing one. Um, there's kind of a, something that happened with a dealer at the Houston show. And we kind of want to give you guys a PSA about it, but Casey's going to talk to you about it right now. Hello guys, this is Casey. I'm going to be talking about the stolen chain. So we were at the Houston coin show about a week ago and we have one of our friends there. He does a lot of bullion, some higher end tone coins, uh, gemstones, gold chains, jewelry. His name's Chris Proper. He's out of Austin, Texas. Real nice guy. We've had him on the show I think two or three months ago. Genuine guy would give you the shirt off his back. He's trying to support a family, right? And let's not get too much into the weeds, but he was set up at the show. The show was pretty dead. Out of all the dealers that could have been there, there was probably 50%, maybe 40%. And we, I acquainted myself with Chris, went and talked to him, see how everything was going, talked about his family, and that was about all. We went on about doing our business. We didn't buy anything from Chris. Um, we're kind of in parallel. We don't deal in the same thing sometimes. So come to find out a few days later after the Houston Coin Show through social media, Chris Proper had a major piece of jewelry, a gold chain. Drew's going to put the dimensions up here of the gold chain. was stolen from his booth. $8,000 lost in just a few moments and I wanted to explain the situation and the story to the best of my knowledge this is I guess secondhand news to you but Chris explained that there was two individuals involved in this scam one was standing by the table and then another one came up eventually they said that they were of Austrian descent they claimed that themselves and they went about buying seventeen eighteen thousand dollars in gold chains and bullion and what ended up happening was chris got towards the end of the process he started boxing everything up and the customer requested that they box them up they put them in plastic and tape them up very well so when they leave the building they are not drawing a lot of attention to themselves it's a lot of money seventeen thousand dollars right so in doing that, in packaging it, in wrapping it up, he put silver in one small decorative box and gold in the other decorative box. The big chain was in the gold box, of course, because it was 18 karat, 20 karat, right? So in the process of packaging these two boxes, the thief and his partner ended up swiping the $8,000 chain from this box when he had his back turned or when he wasn't paying attention, right? So there's a few things to really learn from this situation. Don't hand out the product before they've paid, which they said, okay, they racked up this huge bill of $17,000, right? And the guy starts pulling out the money, right? Starts pulling out the Benjamin, starts counting, right? He only has 7,000, right? So he tells Chris, okay, Chris, I'm interested in this stuff. I want to buy this stuff. I want you to take it off your table and I want you to put it behind you so I can come back and pay for the rest, right? So he gives Chris a $500 deposit so he can go get more cash. Leaves and Chris thinks to himself, wow, that was a really fishy situation. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So Chris goes to grab the two boxes, right? rips them open and he realizes that the chain is gone, right? So going back to the tips that we can learn, don't hand your product out before they pay and always have somebody with you, if possible, that can watch your table so you don't get taken advantage of, right? And have insurance when you go to deal. If it was insured, his insurance company would help him out. If he had somebody else watching him, they could have prevented that situation. And if he handed it out after he received the money, then he wouldn't be in the situation. It's a very unfortunate thing. 
if we could do anything to help Chris through our social media presence to find the person that stole this chain, it would be very helpful for us and it would be very helpful for him. Um, these people are um, many words, but at the end of the day, they stole money from Chris and they took food off of his table. So uh, we're going to try our best to help him out. If you guys enjoyed these two stories about the California and the gold chain, please like and subscribe. We're going to have a lot more interesting content coming out on our podcast. We're going to be doing some collabs with Treasure Town, and we're going to have a lot more coins coming out soon because we will be buying a collection on Friday. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.